Some of you have met me in the past, uh, others maybe haven't. Um, I got into this industry as a nine-year-old and basically been in it ever since. I opened my first fly shop when I was 21 years old. I owned a fly fishing shop for almost 20 years. And after the 20 years and doing uh, millions and millions of dollars of business in, in both New Jersey, New York, and in Florida, um, I then formed a rep agency. I had one of the owners of Sage at the time, who was a very close friend, who said, Chenard, what are you going to do? You're going to own a fly shop for 40 years? And I said, damn right. And he said, look, somebody like you with your experience should consider to be a rep because we need industry people like you. So he convinced me. I, I actually went home to my wife, who was my um, lovely partner forever, and she was in the fly shop since the very first day and I mentioned this to her and she very quickly snapped her fingers and said you're going to be a rep okay so that was that um with that being said it's been 12 years of repping and one thing I've loved incredibly is connecting the dots between those who fish and those who manufacture there's a big problem at times not having these line up okay um so it's been very enjoyable to help these companies align with these markets, fisheries, products, because whether they're from Bainbridge Island or Colorado or the Northeast, it doesn't mean they know exactly what we need with these products. So it's been a fun ride the last 12 years. And I'm gonna show you some products here tonight uh, um, that may be of interest to you. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with Umqua Feather Merchants, okay? So this company, for 49 years has been the world leader in fishing flies, right? So it's a really cool story and company. Uh, basically, uh, for 50 years, they have seven factories around the world where they hand manufacture flies. And I can tell you, nobody wants to get into that business, okay? It is a nightmare. Uh, you can't imagine the risks and time and money invested to go tie a fly, to train these human beings how to tie these flies perfectly and maybe make money by selling a couple hundred dozen or a couple thousand dozen. Like, oh, it's it's a little crazy. But we tip our hats to Umqua for everything they've done over the years because we really wouldn't have the creativity uh, we really wouldn't be where we are today with flies if it wasn't for Umqua. And I say that, everybody, because in the front of this catalog, and it's a neat thing, actually, you have hundreds and hundreds of people shown, okay? These signature tires, they have a career in developing flies and figuring out how we can catch fish better. And without them, we just wouldn't be where we are. So Ump was one of the only companies in the world that actually pays them a commission. So when you see one of these tires goes through the effort of designing a fly and he's with Umpqua and all this, well, Umpqua with their the checkbook really it makes that happen. And I will say during COVID, Umpqua paid over $36,000 of royalty commissions to these fly tires. Many of them are seniors, many of them are retired, you know, when you think of a stimulator, that's Randall Kaufman. To this day, Randall Kaufman doesn't own a fly shop anymore. He doesn't have anything. You know what he gets? He gets royalties on his, on his stimulator fly. So thank you for understanding how the industry works and for protecting these guys when available. But anyway, that's Umqua. And I want to show you a few new products that they have coming out, okay? First of all, um, I understand people are getting tired of not knowing what fly box as what flies in it. So it is nice that this new payload fly boxes are transparent so that you can see which box has what flies you want. And it makes it really easy then, obviously, to go into that box and pick out your fly. So these are some new, boat, new boxes that are gonna replace some of the opaque boat boxes that you can't see into. So these are called the payloads. 
they run about $49. They're in, unbreakable, which is nice. And one thing you can you can notice are these little tapered edges all the way around. And you would be shocked how effortlessly these can go into bags and chest packs and all because of that design. Anyway, that's the payload fly box. That, that came out new. Uh, I did want to mention to you, this is not new, but I need everybody to make sure they understand one of Umpqua's biggest selling products always is their Glide fly line cleaning box and their fly line cleaner. Every one of you should have this and use it every time that you go casting or fishing. Um, I'm embarrassed when I ask many people in these clubs, how many of you clean your fly line before and after every time you go fishing? The, the response is shocking, okay? And, and I just don't get it because these fly lines, they're $100, they're $125, this isn't cheap. And these fly lines, everybody, I gotta tell you, the way you dry skins is with salt. The way you cure things is with salt and lime and mineral and all this. We're, we're, our water here is loaded with stuff in it. And so you, it is your obligation each and every time you use that line, you can't just rinse it, you gotta go clean it. So it's really simple. You take your dressing, you just go ahead and put some of your, your dressing right in there. You can see it there. Put that dressing right on there. Look at the dirt from my fly line, everybody, from cleaning this, okay, each and every time. Huh. I'm going to tell you a tip as a 24-year fly, uh, fly caster and a guide. No fish, all right? When you go to strip line off, I got even a rod here I can do. When you go and strip line off your rod, okay, you're standing on the bow of your boat. I want you to understand, I got people who say, Dave, I'm not responsible enough to clean my fly line. I'm not going to do it, okay? Wait a second here. You can't handle pulling this out of your pocket and just putting it right into, put that fly line right into that notch that it has, okay? You know I'm doing nothing extra right now. Nothing, all right? All I'm doing is stripping line off my reel, just like everybody else to go cast to that snook, okay? So I don't wanna hear nobody can do that, right? Now here's the second part of this. When you have all that fly line that you just stripped off and it's sitting on the deck of your boat, does everybody realize that you're not allowed to fly cast right now it's not allowed you're guaranteed to get a tangle guaranteed why is that because your line is upside down right we understand that right so this is the heavy weight forward and now i'm putting a thin running line on top of it the deck of cards is upside down right so you're not allowed to cast right now i don't care how fast those tarpon are coming down the beach you've got to restack your fly line so it's very simple. After you're done stripping your line off, you hold it the same way, and I want you to strip it in reverse, right back through that box again. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm stripping it in reverse. And when you go strip it through it a second time in reverse, now my fly line is properly layered on the deck of the boat, okay? So it's a fly shop's owner, uh, a fly shop owner's responsibility or a guide to explain this to all fly fishermen that you're not allowed to strip fly line off your reel and just start fly casting. No, it's upside down. You gotta re-strip it right there to layer it properly. Do that with your glide box. And now you've cleaned your fly line twice, okay? And it's as slick as you could, you could imagine, right? So that's a very simple $5 box that stays wet that you can put literally right in your pocket and to go. Now, when you guys are taking shots on the bow, and it's your turn, do you know your line will be noticeably more sticky than when you started, why? Because the water evaporated, all that mineral salt and lime is on the fly line. As, this, as the day goes on, it's worse. So each time it's your turn on the bow, just pull that out of your pocket when you strip line off your reel, it takes no extra time. So anyway, uh, so that I'm not a hypocrite, I gotta reel this line up right now. And so guess what guys, it's the end of the day. I'm gonna, guess what you do, you squeeze this. Right? When you squeeze this, you put tension on your line so your line isn't loose, right? So no under wrapping. So now when I'm putting my line away at the end of the day, I'm squeezing this. So I'm putting it on tight and I'm also cleaning my line, okay? All in the same step. So please consider to protect your fly line and Glide is the best stuff. It's been around for 30 years whatever, and you can buy this as a kit. And one thing I'll tell you is buy extra ones of these. 
You should have this in your glove box. You should have it in your wading pack. You should have it in your boat bag. You'll use two, three, four of these, no doubt. All right, let's move on from glide. I want to talk to you about, as a guide, one of my favorite things to have, everybody, is my nippers and my ceramic hook hone. That ceramic hook hone will never rust, right? No lube needed, no corrosion needed. It'll be there forever. And that's the hook cone you need for today's hooks. And that's because today's hooks are chemically sharpened. All right, so you don't need to take a lure Jensen yellow handle file. We don't need anything like that today. If anything, to get them tarp and sharp, you'll go touch it with a strand of cook cone. And then I myself, I'm getting up there in age a little bit. I like big nips, nips that I can get a grip on. We're not trout fishing here. So remember, Umqua does make these new big nips, and they're available in a standard stainless or in a tungsten carbide. These are $10, $12, and these are like 20 bucks, and they work awesome. You don't need no $100 nippers to get this job done, okay? That, that's to, to impress people, not the fish. But in any case, and that, that's an important guide gear there that I wanted to show you from Umpqua, okay? Um, the big exciting thing right now is Umqua's development of leaders, all right? We have a phenomenal new collection of leaders and tippets that are all coming out. Okay, they're actually out now. Okay, and this is no joke with the research and development that they've done on this whole series. So you'll see we have snook leaders, redfish leaders, we even have the new pink fluorocarbon. Okay, if any of you tarping guys, if you haven't tried the new pink yet, okay, you better sign yourself up real quick because that's unlike any fluorocarbon you've ever tried. Pink in general disappears even quicker than regular fluorocarbon. But the big reason we love it is because it is a little softer and feels a little more lubed than the crunchy, hard fluorocarbons that we're used to. So uh, you may want to take a look at that. Um, now, what is so special about all of these new pivot materials that Umpqua has developed? And I won't bore you, but I will tell you, there's science to this, okay? Today, it's all about the coatings and processes that happen while you manufacture this stuff. This is not one extruded piece of nylon or fluorocarbon. No, sir. Okay. There's actually an extrusion process. And then one, two, three, four. Some of our materials will even have five different processes that you're going to pay. Okay. What are these processes? They could be leveling coats to make sure they're exact diameters, waterproofing coats to stop the nylon or fluorocarbons from absorbing water. It goes on and on and on. So I will say fly fishing tippets and materials are very different than what you would use for conventional fishing. So we continue to push the envelope at Umqua. And I know you guys have a, a wonderful uh, dealer. I, my heart, I, I just love Whitney. I, I love everybody. I love Norm. We're, I'm friends with everybody. I will tell you as a long retailer, Whitney has my heart because he's just such an amazing man. But anyway, he's good at what he does. He's going to have all this up with tippets and leaders and everything in there if you want to go try a leader or two. And to that point, I'm going to talk about the new hooks from Umqua. This is a big, big deal to me, okay? So basically, we've developed an entire series of hooks. Look at all these styles, guys. These are all saltwater hooks all specifically designed for saltwater fly tying. The reason why this is so important is because you can't take a hook that's designed for the conventional world and make some phenomenal fly fishing fly out of it. For the most part, it doesn't work, okay? We're limited by the hooks that are available to create particular styles. So Umqua has invested big money in designing hooks like the new Ben Back, the new 506 for the redfish, the new tarpon hooks. It goes on and on. So Whitney has a lot of these hooks in stock. The thing we love about it is these hook packages. Look how many hooks are in there, guys. I'm done buying hook packages with five or seven hooks in them. I can tie seven flies in an hour or two hours. That's a waste of time. We need to buy hooks in 20 packs, 
okay, at the least 15 packs. So Umqua understands these. Most of these are $9.95 retail, so at the most, like $14.99 retail, but they're 20 packs, so they're much less money than Gamakatsu or Owner or any of these others. And as you go into it, we have a lot of flies that are designed or hooks that are designed for flies. So really something to take a look at. I know you'll love them. Now, uh, talking about Umqua, let's see here. We have new a new uh, three-piece scissor fly tying uh, uh, kit. So you're going to get three. One thing I can say is we can all use new scissors for the holidays or a birthday, ladies, or anybody. And I say that because these wear out. That's what scissors do, right? We drop them. We wear them out. We lose them. You can't ever have too many scissors so you got the hair scissor you're all around and a detail scissor all for $34.95 that's the retail so that's something that you guys can take a look at if you want they're also coming out like you've seen a lot of people doing big material clips okay so this is a like four inch three and a half inch material clip tweezer and it's got measurements on it so if you're going to do that shrimp on a dubbing loop you could put this much pink and that much white Put it in the dubbing loop, and then when you go ahead and do your rotary, you'll be able to have the right proportions of how much did you have white and how much did you have pink, because there's measurements on here. So it's a really neat $12 big tweezer. That's also a new fly tying tool that Umqua has come out with. Um, I think that's about all I need to spend with Umqua, and I am going to move on right now to another brand real quick, and this is Echo. Another brand that you'll see that Whitney has right there on Sanibel. This is Tim Ray Jeff, and a lot of you may know Tim Ray Jeff, but Tim, he's a psycho. He's amazing. He was very frustrated over the years that fly fishing was being hampered or held down due to the price of fly rods. And I completely agree, okay? And this is why I agree. Hear me out on this, okay? Do you know the price of a fly rod in salt water and fresh water doesn't ever cost you being successful as a freshwater angler, okay? And the reason for that is any price level five weight, three weight can catch a trout, any price level. I don't care if you go spend $200, $100, three, four, they may get lighter, they may feel better, but the price of the rod doesn't help you catch more trout. Now, when you look at our saltwater industry, the manufacturers intentionally have been working against the fly fishermen for as long as I can remember because they've persecuted us by saying, oh, you want a good casting saltwater rod? You gotta spend five, six, eight hundred dollars. Well, here's the difference, guys and ladies. We have to have a good saltwater rod to be successful here. You don't need a great trout rod to be successful. We need a high performance fly rod in saltwater to cast in these conditions. So they were leveraging us by getting us to spend six, eight hundred, nine thousand dollars, okay, for no reason, because we all know those rods only cost 25 bucks, 50 bucks. What they're doing is they're getting paid for their research and development, that I understand, more so, they were getting paid to have these things made in America. Look, I am red, white, and blue as far as you can see me, but we have a loyalty or responsibility to our sport I'm sorry, if it costs not $1,000 to make a rod in America, you got to have some options at 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 So this is what Ray Jeff did. Him and his brother, if you know them, Tim and Steve Ray Jeff, they were at Loomis forever. They grew up there. They're world champions. Um, so Steve Ray Jeff stayed at Loomis. Tim Ray Jeff left 18 years ago and formed Echo. So he makes some phenomenal rods. This new Boost Blue, if you know anybody getting into the sport of fly fishing, that rod is $249. Captain Colby Hayne and myself were out casting. I actually brought it by over to 239 Flies, and I quickly just showed them how effortlessly it throws 100 to 110 feet, full fly lines. And I have $249. So there's no bad casting rods today when you have good designers. So uh, you can think about uh, Echo at, at 250 bucks. They also make these all the way to a 12 weight, all the way down to a six weight. So if you wanna go ahead and get into a less expensive, lighter redfish, or somebody wants to get into tarpon, anybody can afford it with the Boost Blues. 
The lift for that matter, that's a $99 saltwater fly rod in an eight weight, $99, right? So if you need, have anybody getting into the sport, you can go visit Whitney there with the Echo. And, and, and I'll tell you, it's lifetime warranty. It's good stuff. Um, you won't be disappointed. Um, one thing I wanted to show you is, if you haven't seen this before, this is the new Echo Prime, okay? And this is the Prime 4. So this is the world's, I would like to say, I mean, don't hold it to me, but I, I've not felt one yet. This is the world's lightest series of saltwater fly rods. So whether you're a female or a male, if you have any kind of elbow, shoulder, wrist, tendonitis, anything at all, I need you to understand you would never see seniors in golf using the same equipment as me, okay? You would never see a lady using the same equipment. Why is it in fly fishing every day we're trying to choke down everybody's throat that it's all the same rod for everybody? No, 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 no. So these primes right here are by far the world's lightest rods. They're a little short than nine foot. They're eight foot 10. And Tim went out of his way for what we do because we do a lot of sight casting. We're, we're, we're needing an accurate rod and we don't, we're not catching striped bass off of Montauk, okay? So I wouldn't recommend this for striped bass off of Montauk. I would recommend this to cast to a laid up snook that you're looking at 30 feet away or accuracy into the mangroves or maybe a tailing redfish you know, uh, in Matt Lachey, great. That's what this was made for right here. So go cast the Echo Primes. You will be thoroughly blown away. You will swear that eight weight is a six weight until you, and then you feel the power and you know it's an eight weight. So the four pieces all you need. These are $459 lifetime warranty. So they're wonderful rods to look at. Oh, by the way, here is that Boost Blue. I might have to put it upside down, but all right, so you look at it upside down. But anyway, it's a beautiful blue. They do a really nice job, okay? Totally, totally nice job. All right. Now, uh, we are gonna move on from Echo and let's get right into uh, Lamson Waterworks. So you guys have heard about Waterworks and Lamson for a long, long time, okay? They make some, they are the pride of America. This is the number one selling reel in America by almost double, just so you know, by the AFTA review of industry sales. So this company uh, starts at, as you know, $99. Well, the new buzz, they go 99 for the liquid. They go 250 for the Guru, fully machined, American-made. We go about 350 on a Speedster. The new talk that you'll see on social media is this new LSF. So this is the new light speed fresh water, 100% American made. It is ridiculously light at about four ounces, really large arbor, a beautiful reel. And for you guys, well, the long awaited LSM in the light speed marine, okay? So the big thing here, everybody, is Waterworks is the only manufacturer in the world that I'm aware of that is making waterproof reels, truly certified waterproof. All these reels leak. I don't care what brand they are, they all leak. Waterworks is IPX8 in this series. So that is internationally approved by the IPX International Certification. It costs a lot of money and research and development and it's laser engraved IPX8 certified. So this is waterproof to 100 feet, 30 meters. And what I would tell you is when you go diving in a pool 10 feet, you can feel the pressure. Imagine at 100 feet. We do that because people end up having leakages with power washing, hose bibs at 50 PSI, uh, everything else that they do, things happen. You got to overbuild reels. And that's what we did. This is a quick spool release, which is really nice. And it is no oil, no grease, zero maintenance, okay? It's also ridiculously light, okay? So this will balance on any. So these start the new LSMs at $599, which when you compare it to your T-Bores and Nautiluses and others, $599 is an amazing American value. And I got to tell you, when you're swinging a reel back and forth and all of this, why fight it, okay? These re reels do feel great with the new uh, generation of lighter rods as well. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, many of you have followed, whoa. Oh, I almost just broke a rod. 
Many of you maybe have seen me on social media talking a lot about these Waterworks lamps and OK Fly Rod. So these are very close to my heart because I was a big part of the development of these rods for two and a half years. Um, these rods came about, everybody, because of what I was telling you. Um, sage flew me to the Dean River in British Columbia. I was one of the biggest sage dealers in all of the world, okay? Uh, very close. That's why one of the owners of Sage convinced me to be a rep, right? Well, uh, guys and ladies, I believe totally that we can't persecute the sport due to the price of rods. So these Waterworks rods are made in the same plant that the Hardy rods are made out of over in Korea. It is the most advanced swing carbon fiber plant in the world. These guys are crazy. We can communicate with them exactly what I want. I want the tip a little softer. I want a little faster. I want more lines. Begin. Oh my gosh, they can do it, okay? And so first thing is I needed to have a flat gray series of rods, all right? This is super important. You would never have your rod be black if you had a choice. Why is that? That's what you notice swinging back and forth in a lot of these clean waters, the beachfront is the black shiny fly rod going back and forth. The motion of your casting is more than, it, than you would imagine to that fish when he can see that. This is about being muted on the skyline and not seeing that glare. And it works really, really well. Um, we did the action on this to be uh, an action that a intermediate caster could still use but this is good enough for any pro. My longest cast with this eight weights, 131 feet, okay? I've won the big gun a couple times with this rod. So this is a championship casting rod if you want it to be. And many master casters have said this eight weight is one of the finest eight weights in the world. I challenge you, if you're ever looking at an eight weight, you check out that $450 Waterworks Samson and it'll, it'll beat most $1,000 or $900 rods. Now they make this in a six weight, all the way on to a 12 weight so and if you are in the if you're in the um if you're in the market sooner than later uh 239 flies uh whitney's uh mangrove outfitters all are discounting these right now because the new waterworks rods coming out in february only thing we're changing is the real seat i'm doing a nicer knurling on the nuts and it's gonna have a positive a little different milling here on the real seat, but the blank is all the same. So if you want a deal, you're gonna be able to buy these for $300 or less, uh, which is phenomenal lifetime warranty for $45. So that's the Waterworks Saltwater Series rods. And then this one has a cobalt reel on it. And just, you know, the cobalt Waterworks, that's the big game reel. If any of you are ever in the market for a true tarpon reel, right? Look, I know we have our history with us, Tibor this, Nautilus that, or Penn, or Von Stahl. No, 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 no. Guys, this is modern technology. You will never service this. We have three years invested in research in that reel. We have not one warranty. Not one. Not a single one. So uh, you don't need grease. You don't need oil. You don't have to worry about maintenance. You don't have to do anything to this reel. It is, it is a $700 reel. I get that. But that's your cobalt from Waterworks. All right, moving on. I want to talk about fly tying real quick, okay? Oh, before I do, if any of you are looking for a booty that is larger in volume that can be used with a neoprene guard or used with a pair of waders, this would be the one. I say that because understand all booties in the world that I'm aware of have always been designed for naked feet. At most, socks, okay? I got people, I get asked all the time when I had a fly shop, I want to use these with waders to wade the beach. I don't, need, I don't want big, heavy boots. I'm not going trout fishing. I just want to slip on some booties, okay? Well, you can't do it. Not unless you buy them two sizes bigger, and even at that, they're going to be that big, and they don't have the room here. So this volume from Adams Built... Okay, these are their not creep neoprene booties. This volume is oversized. I can fit my full fist. It's amazing the volume inside of here for you to be able to use it with a waiter or with extra socks. So that may be of interest to some of you. That's Adams Built is the company. By the way, they make a phenomenal series of waiters as well that sell in that uh, uh, anywhere from $199 to $299 range. Now, 
That's my fly time. I'm going to show you this peak. I'm sure many of you have seen them. Peak is manufactured 100% in Colorado. They are absolutely killing it right now. After 20 some years, they're finally coming into their own. Okay. And this setup is tremendous. So this setup has this big 11 pound base on it. It's called the Jurassic base. You can't budge this base. What I love about this base also is that you can put a back shaft. Look at that rear six inch accessory shaft. That shaft is spread by the full 10 inches. So that shaft is so far back so that you can go ahead then and have your profile plate on it, okay? And it gives you room where you're not crowding yourself from your vice, okay? You can also mount your light on it with, like this, which this LED light is the best light in the business. It really is um, phenomenal. All right, and then they have the waist scroll. So this vice is only $155 made in the US of A, lifetime warranty. And that jaw can do anything you want it to do. They make some midge jaws and they make a saltwater jaw as well if you want. But you buy the vice for $155. If you want to put this mambo base on it, it comes with a good base, but this base is only $89. It's a steel for the 11 pounds of steel that it is. So it's your peak rotary. And uh, something that if any of you are into vices, you really may wish to take a look at. All right, lastly, before I let you go, I've been developing some really exciting new flies and Umqua took them all. So you're gonna see them in the Umqua catalog next year and we're gonna be doing videos and all on it. Uh, let me tell you, I've never weighted flies the same as everybody else for probably 10 years, okay? And I've kept it secret. And my wife through COVID this year said, would you be upset if somebody else comes out with flies that are designed like yours after 30 years? I've never seen anybody doing what you do. Would you be upset? And I, and I, and I agreed. I said, I guess I would. She's like, you better get off your butt and make, you know, set the precedent. So I tied a collection of flies that I've tied for bonefish for years. And I presented them to Umqua and they loved them. They took the whole collection. So I'm gonna share with you tonight, you're the first people ever to see these because I'm not even gonna put it socially yet. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you would have seen some of these flies were shown, but I didn't talk about it because I wanted to see if anybody noticed it and nobody noticed it or nobody made a comment. So anyway, what I wanna show you, this is my minnow pattern, Chewy's minnow, okay? I want you to notice, if you can, I want you to notice how that fly is weighted. A single tungsten bead, okay? You can see that tungsten bead very clearly, all right? Let me tell you what a difference it is when you go, so these are my Chewy's Cyclops beads, okay? But uh, I believe Umqua Feather Merchants might pick them up and, and do them themselves. But what I'm here to tell you is that don't underestimate how much you suffer from using a dumbbell or a bead chain eye, okay? Dumbbells and bead chains have a lot of resistance in the water. They catch grass, they're bulky, and the fish don't eat them because it looks like an eye, not at all. It just so happens when you tie a crazy Charlie or a gotcha, the only reason they used bead chain is because it was hanging from the ceiling fan. Okay? It was readily available. It wasn't that it was the best. When you compare tiny tungsten beads to bead chain or lead, it is dramatic when you see and start weighing. What does a bead chain actually weigh? What does a lead dumbbell actually weigh? Well, pull out your digital scales. And when you go put little tiny tungsten beads instead of those, they land with no plop at all. Nothing. It's the difference of a splashy Olympic diver. It's a difference of me diving, doing a belly flop, compared to one of these, don't get offended, compared to one of these Asian, um, these, these Chinese divers, right? These Chinese divers are like, whoop without even one drop in the water. So I brought these flies over to Blackfly Lodge and I fished with Clint Kemp, their owner, because I teach their advanced fly casting school. 
And Clint Kemp, the owner of the lodge, says they're the best bonefish slice he's ever used, period. And he wrote a testimonial. So I will tell you, experiment with your fly tying. Uh, you will see I've tied so many different redfish flies. All of these flies are all going to be tied with beads. And the beads are tremendous with how they fish. So anyway, just wanted to give you a little inspiration on mixing up your tying. But uh, I didn't want to take you up too much. I just wanted to hit on a couple hot spots and then open the floor up for any questions you may have. Oh, before I do, uh, Monic fly lines. If any of you are looking for a clear fly line, Monic is one of the oldest manufacturers in Colorado of fly lines, and they make a pretty impressive collection of clear fly lines. Uh, and some markets in Florida, they do well with clear fly lines because they believe it makes a difference. I'm not here to prove or convince you that it makes a difference. I'm just saying if you ever want to play with a clear fly line, consider Monic. All right, questions? Uh, Dave D. Walter, I'm just curious. I've never seen a single tungsten bead. How do you attach that to the hook? Uh, let's show you a picture. One second here. All right. By the way, like here's another one. Ooh, this one's just just look at. So look at this fly with that single, single bead underneath it, right? Redfish fly. Now, let me show you how it's tied in. Hold on. Uh, and I do some flies with triple beads, right? So you can tie with two beads, three beads. Hold on, here we go. My cyborg shrimps. have three tungsten beads. For, those are for the edges, right? So, and the silhouette of that shrimp, look how that silhouette of that shrimp is with no dumbbells. All right, this, this has the weight of like a large lead. With a small lead, actually, now, now let me keep showing you picture. Let me show you how I attach it, though, to get there. All right, let's see here. It's a piece of fluorocarbon. You can use regular mono. I'll go and take an O21 is the diameter, O21 mono, and then I'll go crush about with a flat nose plier, I'll crush about maybe just a 16th of it to tie it in. And then, uh, one second, and then we'll go slip on the bead and we'll lash it in that way on a piece of mono lashed to the underside of the hook. Here we go, I'm getting to it. So, all right, so here's a triple. That was three for the cyborg. So that's what that's what's tied in in that shrimp there is three beads. One second. Let's go and show you a standard. Now there's a few ways you could do this. You can do it where you're putting the beads in the middle of the hook. And that works great for a lot of flies. But for red fishing, I like a big, oh, by the way, those two things are the same weight, OK? So that's my, the point of, you know, um, why would you use bead chain when you could, so here's another great example of, would you rather tie in that tiny tungsten bead and hide it or put in that big dumbbell? Now, let's see here. Here's another picture of how to tie it in. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this one will go. This one will do. All right. So I sometimes... So you'll notice that bead is a teardrop bead. It's not a normal round bead. It looks like a snow cone or a teardrop. And that's an O21, which is like 30 pound mono that I slightly flattened where I tied in, unflattened through the bead for security, and then flattened when I retie it in. And that's the way I would do it right there to end up with uh something like this is one of my bonefish flies wow you can't even see that can you uh, i get the idea there thank you all right very good yep, there you go anyway now the advantage you guys have is these tungsten beads are available in 2.8 millimeter 3.3 millimeter four millimeter 4.3 so you can fine tune the depths of your flies for the flats. So if you got snook in 20 inches of water, you should have a 2.8 millimeter bead on that. 
I, I know for a fact, right? And that'll get any fly to flip upside down and to jig properly in 18 inches of water, let's say. We've never had that ability to control the depth of our flies this fine-tuned. It's always been a small lead or a medium lead. There's a lot more going on than just a smaller medium lead. Does anybody else have questions for Dave? Another great red tipped pattern. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah, oh, here's a point too. If you're gonna play with this, that bead is held on by the same mono that I used to do the double weed guard. So you'll see that weed guard, that mono got brought through the bead, brought back up, okay? And it's one step to hold the bead in and have your weed guard all at once to hold in that bead. And who's got these, Dave? Who's got these beads? My pleasure, everybody. Who's got the beads, Dave? Uh, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, so Hairline, Hairline distributed these in a smaller sizes many, many years ago. They killed them uh, two years ago. And uh, so I was forced to import them myself. Uh, I just got my new Hairline catalog and they added them back in, I think, because of all the pressure from certain right. people. So you should be able now to go to your local fly shops and have Hairline order them for you if they're back in stock. Right now I'm negotiating with Umqua to see whether or not I'm gonna be selling my Cyclops beads or whether or not they're gonna sell them. So you'll end up being able to get them from me, Umqua, definitely Hairline right now. Okay, very good. Thanks, Thanks guys, have a good one. Okay.